Today, we're talking about goats. Goats have gained quite a reputation for themselves, haven't they? Quite a spooky reputation, even diabolical. They make appearances in film, medieval artwork, and they cut a pretty intimidating figure. How did these animals come to be associated with witches and devils? Here's some speculation. Goats have had a close relationship with humans for a very long time, being one of the first domesticated animals. Goats have played an important agricultural role to humans as livestock, but also play important roles in ancient Greek, Chinese, and Norse mythology. They were considered sacred in ancient Sumerian and Babylonian society and were used in many religious ceremonies. When the Christian church came along and sought to propagate their religion, they often decided to demonize other religions and customs in order to impose their own. It was then, perhaps, that the goat became in league with the devil, simply because it was involved in pre-Christian and pagan religious ceremonies, such as sacrifices. The devil, over time, took on goat-like features, horns and cloven hooves, the goat-headed deity Baphomet, who was born from some very muddled and inaccurate history of the Knights of Templar, has become the face of the modern satanic temple. Goats have also become closely tied to witches. Old woodcuttings show witches astride the backs of goats during sabbats. Francisco Goya has two very famous and impressive paintings called Witches' Sabbath that show women gathered about a great he-goat. Perhaps the most famous goat in modern media is Black Philip, the horned antagonist of the 2015 film The Witch. Suffice to say, goats are now icons of evil, and I think they're better than ever. They've even found their way into present-day urban legend and folklore. I found a handful of examples of Goatman legends, particularly in the United States. I thought this was fascinating, and I love a good urban legend, but I wasn't aware that there was this repetitive trope of Goatman stories sprinkled throughout the country. So I did some research and sought out as many as I could find, and I'd like to share some of these with you now. So the first place I caught wind of these Goatman legends was on the USC Digital Folklore Archives. This website is affiliated with the University of Southern California Folklore Program, and it is a public digital archive of oral accounts taken from people concerning myth, legend, and folklore and traditions. It is so cool. Anyway, I was just browsing around on there when an entry came up for the Goat Man of Pope Lake Creek. This account was collected by a student in the USC Folklore Program, and the context given is, quote, The informant is a close friend and former roommate of mine. I asked her if she had any folklore from her hometown in Kentucky she could share with me." End quote. And apparently she did. The informant says, So, there's this creek, pretty close to my house. Probably about, like, ten minutes away. It's called Pope Lick. I don't know why. But me and my friends would go there pretty often because there's these train tracks that run up above, and underneath there is where the goat man is supposed to be. He's supposed to have, like, the legs of a goat, top part of a dude, and what he's supposed to do is if you're there at night, which we were pretty often, he'd go and either lure you down and then go and like grab you and eat you, or he'd like fucking jump down and get you. But that was the whole thing, like, ooh, we're hanging out and we might die. Someone's gonna get killed by the goat man. But it was very fun. So this goat man is commonly known as the Pope Lick Monster, and it is intimately tied to a large railroad trestle. Stories say that the creature escaped from a derailed train and was possibly a revenge-driven circus performer. Another story is that it's a demonic reincarnated farmer who sacrificed goats to Satan in exchange for power. Whatever he may be, he now haunts the trestle, sometimes carrying a bloody axe to strike down any who wander near the tracks. Stalking the train tracks, he may leap down upon cars driving beneath the trestle, or lure people onto it using hypnosis or mimicking the voice of someone familiar to their intended victim. If the Pope-like monster doesn't get you with his bloody axe, you may meet your death by being struck by an oncoming train, or falling or leaping from the trestle. Because, despite what many think about this trestle, it is not an abandoned structure. It is still very much in use, and trains pass over it regularly throughout the day. So, while the legend of the Pope-like monster is a fun and tantalizing one, it is actually quite a dangerous and potentially deadly one to seek out, and it's not due to a goat man. 
Unfortunately, several teenagers have lost their lives on the trestle, either by being struck or falling from the tracks in attempts to avoid an oncoming train. Many others have sustained injuries, and the locals of Louisville, Kentucky have come to despise the legend of the Pope-Link monster, who, real or not, has been the cause of much pain and heartbreak for the families of people lost and injured on the trestle. Though the legend may be a fun one, let's keep it around the campfire. If you find you must see if there is any actual goat man lingering around the area, please stay off the trestle, and instead keep to the walking path that has been built that runs along the ground below the bridge. After I read this story, I decided to peruse the Goat Man tag on the USC Folklore Archives, and I found a couple more stories. The next one is from Carryville, Tennessee in Red Ash Cemetery. Here's the context given for the account on the Folklore Archives. The informant is one of my best friends from my hometown in Tennessee. She is 20 years old and goes to our community college. I called to get her version of the folk legends about the infamous cemetery in the town next to ours, since she has been there multiple times, and is nestled down a long, windy, abandoned road we call Ole 63. So here's what the informant says. Red Ash is a small, super old graveyard on the back road of 63. Everything on that road is just creepy anyway, like all the burnt buildings and how it seems to always look dark, even during the daytime. Even driving to get there will freak you out. The legends of Red Ash are very known and accepted around here. So there are two storylines about Red Ash. One is that there's some kind of half-man, half-goat that will run you out of the cemetery if it thinks you are there to screw around and be disrespectful. The other one, which is the most common, is about the witch's grave. She will be sitting on her grave, crying over it, and people leave coins on her grave if she doesn't bother them. The major no-no is taking money off her tombstone. Apparently, horrific accidents have happened to several people who did that. There's also just a bunch of weird paranormal stuff that kind of varies depending on personal experience. Since the informant has been to the cemetery several times, she goes on to tell a little bit about her experiences there. I know it sounds crazy, but just walking up to the graveyard has made my stomach absolutely drop every time, and not in, like, a nervous way. It's a feeling that I can't explain, and everyone that I've asked feels instantly uneasy when they get out of the car too. There really is a woman buried there from the 1800s that was said to be a witch, and there's always money there, but I would never touch it. I can't say I've seen her, but I swear I've heard cries. One time, we could have sworn we heard someone scream at us to leave, and then we all felt such a bad aura that we left. But some of my friends that have gone have had terrifying experiences. Like, after one girl got back in her car, she had scratches all over her body. Oh, and the red eyes. That's a very common sight from almost everyone. Isn't it interesting that the two prominent stories in the cemetery are about a goat, or a goat man, and a witch? Once again, the goat and the witch are side by side. I wonder if that's a coincidence. Apparently, this cemetery and the 10-mile stretch of road leading up to it are rife with legends and ghost stories. In addition to what the account we just read mentioned, there's also a mysterious blue light that appears over train tracks. I couldn't find any more details about the goat man, other than he's apparently 8 feet tall and has a pentagram on his forehead. Our next tale takes place in Texas, near Denton. It's called Goatman's Bridge. Here's the context for this account on the Folklore Archives. My informant told me this story when I asked about ghost stories from her hometown. She says she learned it from friends when she was around 16 years old. She says she would tell the story if she was telling someone where to go for fun. And one time, she and her friends actually made a trip to the place. The following is a description of the legend in her own words. There's a bridge in Denton, Texas called Goatman's Bridge. If you park outside the bridge at night and honk your horn three times, a goat man will appear. He's half goat, half man. I want to say that he screams, but I don't remember. There's the bridge, and then there's this sort of cul-de-sac area around it. And if you park in that area, then he appears in the entrance of the bridge. On an unrelated note, a lot of people have died there. I don't think in the recent past, but a long time ago. And I don't know how, but I know it happened. It's in a really sketchy area. So this bridge is called the Old Alton Bridge, colloquially known as Goatman's Bridge. And it's definitely locally regarded as a spooky place and receives frequent late night visitors seeking the legends of Goatman. 
There are some prominently circulated false origins behind the goat man with the roots in racism and pre-emancipation attitudes. Isn't it funny though how the person recounting the story of the goat man's bridge say that they don't know how, but they know people have died there. I feel like that's kind of how urban legends go. I don't know how it happened, I don't know who it happened to, but I know it happened. Interestingly enough, this isn't the only Goatman's Bridge in Texas. There's also one in Burke Burnett, although it's not nearly as famous in the one in Denton. And get this, I also found a Goatman's Tunnel and two other mention of Goatman in different areas of Texas. Wichita Falls, Lake Worth, Victoria, Cleburne, Hamilton. There's even one more account on the folklore archives from Texas, but this time it's a goat lady. How's that for equality? Here's what it says. S, a 19-year-old from Houston, Texas, says her fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Q, told her about the urban legend of the goat lady. Mrs. Q detailed her own experiences with the goat lady, having encountered her in the woods with a couple of her friends during childhood. Mrs. Q recalled seeing the goat lady stand on her hind legs and stare with lifeless eyes before barreling rapidly forward towards Mrs. Q and her friends. S remembers being absolutely horrified by the retelling of the goat lady encounter. S's family planned a hike in the woods for Easter weekend, but having just heard the story of the goat lady, S was too terrified to go on the hike with her family. For a while, she was extremely hesitant to go into the woods at all. I found Goatman legends in several other states. There's a prominent one in Maryland that takes place along a wooded stretch of road. There's a page for this road, Fletchertown Road in Bowie, Maryland, on a website called Haunted Places, which maps out allegedly haunted locations around the world, and people can leave comments if they have anything to say about the place in particular. Here we have one recounting a possible Goatman sighting. I was driving along this road one night. I spotted something along the side of the road. Its lower body was hidden in the leaves, but I could see its head, a goat. Assuming it was a regular goat, I just kept driving. At that time, I wasn't into monsters like I am now, so I didn't know about the goat man. Like four seconds later, I noticed the goat was following me down the road, right behind me. But it wasn't a goat. It was wearing clothes and looked human. I screamed as loud as I could and slammed on the gas pedal. I have never driven on that road ever since. Goatman legends also exist in Wisconsin, Missouri, Washington, and Colorado, and probably more places. It's very possible one exists in every state. These legends almost always take place around lonely, wooded roads, train tracks, bridges, cemeteries, and lovers' lanes. All the usual haunts for urban legends. Places where it's dark at night, where the artificial light of street lamps and houses are few and far between, and woods close in close to the road on either side. These features lend a spooky atmosphere and are good places for teenagers to drive out to and feel away from the cloying presence of adults. These places are where urban legends are born and thrive. So sure, these areas are obvious locations for folktales and urban legends to breed and attach, but why goat men? Here are my theories on the matter. Pretty much all of the Goatman legends we went over tonight are in fairly rural places where farmland is probably present. Goat's presence as a livestock could contribute to them appearing in urban legends in these areas. Several of the origin stories as to how the Goatman in question came to be were farmers or specifically goat herders who return after death as a corrupted half-man, half-beast. This brings in that classic association of goats with devils and witches. Let's go back to those wood cuttings. Goats have been portrayed as witches familiars for hundreds of years, with wood cuttings going back to 1500. It was around this time that witches became a more mainstream public concern. Before 1500, witches weren't feared or even really taken seriously as something that existed outside of story. Much of what was established about the portrayal and supposed practices of witches was due to a book published in 1486 called the Malleus Maleficarum, or the Hammer of Witches. This book, written by two clergymen, was meant to educate the public about the threat of witches and the horrendous acts of consorting with the devil, eating children, and flying through the air on pitchforks or on the backs of goats. The authors, Heinrich Kramer and Jacob Springer, reinforce the goat as one of the guises the devil commonly takes, and that devil worship in the cabric form has been around since the time of ancient Rome via the fauns and satyrs of their mythology and the half-goat faunus, or pan. However, 
Goats were also accepted as common familiars, spirits who take the form of animals to assist witches. Just as it is today, and how it has been for a large part of human civilization, goats were a prominent livestock animal during European witch hunts. So, any peasant or farmer could be accused of witchcraft simply for being in the company of goats. A final reason goats have been tied to witches is that goats have long been symbols of fertility, sexual virility, and carnality. The Malleus Maleficarum stresses that most witches are female because women are more carnal than men, and witchcraft comes from carnal lust, which is in women insatiable. I don't know if I agree with that, but the Hammer of Witches is contained entirely of misleading and fictitious material. However, it still went on to cause the torture and execution of tens of thousands of people from the 15th to 19th century. Besides all the religious and symbolic implications, there may be some physicalities belonging to goats that lend to their intimidating reputation. Obviously, those eyes. The rectangular pupils give sort of an otherworldly sense about them, much as vertically slitted pupils of cats or snakes produce a similar effect. Their appearance in general can be quite striking. Long, curved horns, shaggy beards. As far as character goes, they are known to be stubborn and temperamental. You wouldn't want to be on the other end of the horns of an angry goat. Goats are one of the oldest domesticated animals, and yet they continue to captivate the human imagination. And while it may be fun to fear the goat, let's remember where that fear comes from. A place of ignorance and prejudice of older spiritualities and perceived inferior class statuses. We can enjoy the legends and the stories, but let's remember to respect and admire the almighty goat. Okay.